Uh, hey everyone, welcome back to the Rally Blog Podcast. Uh, we got our first podcast post nationals, and we actually have uh, the national champions of the Premier <laughs> Division, uh, Peter John Showalter and Tyler Chiswick of Chiswick Showalter, on with us today. So we're going to try to pick their brain a little bit and learn how uh, you can beat them next year and become <laughs> national champions yourselves. No. <laughs> <laughs> so to start off, uh, Tyler and PJ, um, can you tell us a little bit about yourselves, like when you started playing, what sports you played before round net, and kind of your history in the sport? Go for it. Yeah, all right. <laughs> so, yeah, so um, uh, I started off uh, playing around four years ago, four and a half years ago first tournament was uh, Summer Spike 2013, and uh, we lost to Chico in the round of eight, so, but not bitter at all, but <laughs> to the first tournament, they were great, <laughs> and uh, yeah, so I started off on the rookies for my first uh, three years, and uh, this last year I played with Peter John, and we had a pretty successful year, and uh, yeah, um, I played soccer primarily when I was in high school, a little bit of basketball, but mostly soccer, and that seems to translate pretty well, surprisingly, over to spike ball. So that's pretty cool. Yep. That's what I got. <laughs> <laughs> um, my name is Peter John. I started playing spike ball a little over three years ago, I think. Um, me and my brother, my whole family was at a wedding, and we saw it after the wedding uh, just at the reception. There were some people messing around with it. They taught us how to play. Um, the next Christmas, I think, we got me and my, I have three brothers, so we got a set, and it was two-on-two two with the brothers for a little while. Um, and then me and my oldest brother, Seth Showalter, realized um, that we, that there were these tournaments all over the country. Um, went to a little tournament in Ohio and ended up winning it, and we're like, oh, we might actually be pretty good at this. And then went to a bigger tournament and got wrecked by Nashburg, by Joel Graham and Scott Wilson, and realized that we were not very good at it. Um, but it, it gave us the itch, and so I've been playing ever since then. I've played on a – oh, wow. I've played on a different team every year, and I just realized <laughs> that right now. Oh, um, boy. But, but I started out with <laughs> started out with Seth, my oldest brother, and I played with Josiah Zimmerman last year on Safi. Um, and this past year, I was Chiswick Showalter. And, yeah, excited to see where it goes. Do you have something to tell me about next year? Or? Uh, not yet. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, well, the first question to start off is, uh, the, of course, uh, how does it feel uh, to win nationals? <laughs> Freaking awesome. <laughs> Feels pretty great, not going to lie. Feels like, I guess, Chico did for many years. So <laughs> <laughs> We're feeling like the first year of Chico, apparently. <laughs> yeah. No, it was, it was really special for me. I don't know if I'm actually supposed to answer this question in full, but for me it was really special because um, my parents or my whole family – uh, kind of came to Chicago um, for nationals and they had been the only tournament they'd ever been to was the one in Columbus from where I'm from um, so it was sick for them and my girlfriend and her whole family um, to be able to come and just like be around and like see what I do every single weekend basically and what I practice throughout the week and not think I'm an idiot anymore mm -hmm. and then also Ashley put <laughs> second at women's nationals so that was pretty sick so it was really special it was a really special day yeah it was super cool because I know for both of us we've been talking about that tournament for a while and wanted to get the national championship so it was pretty cool to actually achieve what we've been wanting to for a while now so it felt good for sure and going into the day like what teams were you most kind of scared of beforehand i know you shouldn't really answer you shouldn't be scared of anyone but uh like realistically who are you kind of most worried about uh, for me, I mean, for me, it's a clear answer. It's definitely anchored because Fitzy definitely knows me more than anyone, for sure. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it, he has the best chance of getting picking up on our hits, and that was the one team we lost to all year. So definitely going in, it was a uh, question mark to see what would have happened if we did match up. We didn't, Unfortunately, we didn't get the chance to, but, uh, yeah, definitely anchored was going to be a tough opponent for us if we had to match up with them. Um, for me, it was any team that we had never played before, honestly. Um, not that I was, like, deathly afraid of each one of those teams, but, like, I don't know. I feel I felt comfortable with each team we had played before um, going into the tournament. Um, but teams like Button Bowls and Point Loma and a couple of teams like that that were really good but that we never had the chance to face, I was just really curious how, how games against them would turn out. And, unfortunately, we never really played any teams until Spicy Ruby um, that we never played before. And then they were 
really, really good and almost took us out, which I think is part of, of why I was scared of teams like that. But mainly for me, it was just teams we hadn't faced. Quick question on that. What was your guys' mentality when they, they took that game off you? Did you did you guys go off to the sidelines and have a little talk, or what was discussed? Well, uh, I think uh, for me, I, I can talk to myself. I don't know what PJ felt exactly, but um, I know for me, I was, I was still trying to, like, be confident about it because we've lost, actually, a good amount of first games throughout this year, and uh, we always seem to come back and play really well in the second game, so... My kind of thought process was let's get another typical CS second game win and uh, <laughs> and uh, win by a big margin and we happened to be able to do that. I think we won 21-15, 21-16, so I was happy with that. And then third game was just like, all right, one one, they're gonna come out. We need to come out as well and just match their match their play and get a, get a W. It's become like a like a running joke between me and Tyler because for some reason once we reach like the quarters and start playing really really good teams we just get murdered the first game most of the time um, and I don't really know what that is but that happened again um, with with Strange in the quarters they took us out first game and we beat them like 21-9 second game and then had a good third game um, and then happened with Spicy Ruby they took us out in the first game and I don't know what it is about that but it, I don't really feel super nervous like they were obviously very good and very on fire and that was a little bit scary but I, I think me and Tyler just kind of looked at each other and we're like all right we know we got the second game and then we'll see what happens in the third game so that was the main mentality of it I think just like to make teams get complacent and then just pump it <laughs> <laughs> apparently figuring us out there you go <laughs> what was what was what was, what was y'all's mindset kind of going into the day as well like you discussed what it felt to win like even during that championship game, but like going into what's kind of like the mentality y'all had and feelings around y'all going into it. Um, I think I was just really pumped up because I mean the announcement at six thirty that that <laughs> that there wasn't going to be nationals, and then to actually figure out that there was nationals. I think we were both pretty pumped up that we actually get to play and have a chance of winning the championship. So yeah, I think starting off we're definitely pumped up, but also trying to keep our relaxed manner like play really relaxed so we're not like freaking out on on different points so yeah definitely a combination of really hyped but also trying to keep it cool you know yeah i think for me it was kind of the same but it was just like a straight up roller coaster of emotions because my just a ton of friends and family had come out um because it was the biggest tournament of the year and a lot of them had never been to a spike ball tournament and it was just really special for me to have them there and when i woke up at 6 30 and read the thing <laughs> I was just more angry than I've been in a long time <laughs> and then just super bummed and then when I was eating pancakes um, to take away my sorrows and found out that it was back on um, I was just super excited so I think honestly like the night before I felt super prepped and just ready to go and like I was thinking through game plans and stuff but then the morning of when I found out it was back on it was just a ton of excitement and just like all right let's go let's go have fun and play spike ball so it's a little different than I was expecting for sure I think a lot of people were feeling that way. A lot of people, yeah. when they, they came in, like you can yeah, see yeah. everyone was just excited to play because it was like, no, you can't. All right, you actually can. And they're like, yes, I get to play. <laughs> <laughs> I saw uh, Patrick Drucker just running around with a giddy little smile on his face uh, all the full play. It's like uh -huh. acing the crap out of people. <laughs> so similar to Logan's question about mentality, how is your as mentality like throughout the year? Because I know it's, Sean always would say, heavy lies the crown. Uh, and you know being the top dog is not easy so were you guys like having trouble with motivation like or did you guys just keep wanting to be the best the whole season like how did that go down uh, I think towards towards like three-fourths of the way through the season um, we were starting to realize that we just were kind of screwing around and getting really close to getting beaten and then trying our very hardest when it came down to people almost beating us and it wasn't a fun way to play and it wasn't fun for other people to play us and it wasn't super successful and then anchored took us out very handily and we realized that that was just not at all um, what we wanted to do and so I think after that it was a little bit of a wake-up call and also kind of just like we realized we weren't having as much fun because it felt like we had to pretend like we weren't trying to be the best team in the country because that's always what it looked like Chico was doing. Um, but then we realized it's also really fun to just try as hard as we can and see how much we can beat teams by um, and just see what happens. And so I think that was kind of a switch in mentality towards the end. And we kind of realized 
were not the same team as Chico, and they play just a whole different laid back style that when we uh, would try to play it, just aren't. It's not really our style. It's not really our thing. So um, I think we kind of switched up a little bit towards towards the end of the season, and it ended up working out really well for us. Yeah, I think Anchored, the Boston Grand Slam against Anchored is definitely a huge turning point for us, I feel like, because um, the beginning of the season, or at least up until then, we got a lot of comments like, hey, you guys are are not that fun to watch. And we're like, what? What do you mean? We're, <laughs> we're winning. We should be fun to watch, right? But, I mean, I don't know. We, we kind of just, like, like PJ said, just took it way too relaxed, and we're definitely not fun to watch watch because i would watch the games afterwards and be like what the heck are we doing like we're just not even running on defense we're just yeah it was weird so i know that going into chicago grand slam which is the next tournament after uh, boston we were like all right we need to really step up our game we, we can't just be goofing around we got to actually take this seriously and and really you know play play how we can play so that was definitely a turning point and i think uh it, as as tough as it was to lose to anchored i think it was a good thing that we actually did lose when we did because then we had three really important uh, tournaments after that that we were really focused for. So, yeah. But they owe us a bunch of money. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny you say that, though, because I can, back to the Chico days, pinpoint key losses that almost helped you in the long run because you'll go on to win the next few tournaments or the bigger tournaments. Right. Uh, so I totally agree with that. But one question, too. Would you say that, guys, I guess talk us through the season-long how often did you practice? What did you do to prepare after this? Did it go up tenfold, or what was the? Was there a change off the field as well? Um, well, yeah. So I, I definitely try to play when I can. I probably get in like I don't know. Um, try to touch a ball like twice a week or something like that. Hopefully, play like like a real pickup like once a week or something like that. I know the first half of the season up until like june it was kind of tough because when i was home uh aunt had baseball for a while and then fitz was at school so when baseball was done and and fitz was graduated the summer we kind of well I, I was i was living in lang so then i had a bunch of people to play with and a bunch of people to train with so we kind of we had a group chat and kind of tried to get together as much as we could and uh play but uh i know that um Later in the season, I definitely tried to work on my serve, just getting more consistent because I was I would watch tape and just I would have like a forty percent serve ratio <laughs> or something, and and that's just pitiful. That's pitiful to get on forty percent of your serves. So I know that later on, I was just trying to get a serve that was consistently go on and that was I mean decently <clears throat> paced, so I can get a bad touch or something. So I think it paid off in the end that I practiced a little more. Uh, from now on, um, yeah, I mean. I'm sure there's going to be a ton of teams going for us now that that we're on top. So definitely can't take it easy and just got to keep up the work and hopefully we can do well next year as well. Um, I think for me, it's been pretty sporadic. I go to school in Kentucky. Um, I brought spike ball here. So one, one of my friends that I came with, um, who's my roommate actually, um, knew how to play spike ball. We had played before, but then I taught everybody else that plays here now how to play. And so we have like maybe 20 people that'll play um, just off and on randomly, but it's just a kind of different level of spike ball. Um, and so the times when I do get good training in is just randomly, like random weekends where I'll visit friends um, who are really good, or like if I visit Tyler, or if I go visit Nashburg and hang out with them or something, I'll get to get to get touches in with them, play with them. Um, but other than that, honestly, it's just been a lot of um, playing gentleman serves and then working on defense and just seeing if I can get every single ball up because I'm playing a lot of people who have been playing for like six months and so it's definitely a different kind of training but it's been helpful in in a lot of different ways I think so it's been an interesting um, experience and then after after we lost anchored I would say I don't know if practice time went up but I would say like motivation to make practice times like when I am with really good people count um, went way up and then also just like desire to seal away every game early on at every single tournament went up because it just it didn't feel good um and so that, that definitely changed like the mentality going into tournaments after that for sure i know that on the west coast too there's almost a running joke of the lack of practice or outside of tournament play that it goes on with yeah. the top teams because they just they know they'll go out there and perform the day of but 
maybe down the road we'll see teams who are putting their work in are the ones that are pulling up to the top. Yeah. Yeah, hopefully, because I know Hilltop puts in a ton of work. So it was really cool because two years ago at regionals, um, we, we as the rookies, uh, we faced them in the first round. And they were like these like tiny kids. They were, they they were not that good. And it's fun to to see that when you put in all that work. Now they're like one of the top teams and just beating some big name teams. So yeah, I I hope that people put in the work and and really uh, challenge themselves. I have a little funny anecdote. Uh, before nationals, uh, Dan McParland said to his roommate, "If you let me serve to you, I'll give you ten percent of our prize money." <laughs> and, and, he, and he didn't take it though uh, but he would have made oh. he would have made like a hundred bucks just to Dang. catch theirs that's a bad scary. move that's yeah. a bad rejected <laughs> offer it's <laughs> always next year yeah. <laughs> that's pretty funny all right i have actually a specific question for pj that i've always wondered Ooh. when you when you line up to serve do you know what you're going to do or do you just decide instantly and do it like are you like, all right, I'm going to flango, wait three seconds, then do it? Or are you kind of stand there and then, like, last second make the decision? Ah, uh, this might sound really cheesy, but I honestly try to read the person that I'm serving to. So it might sound dumb, but I'll, like, well, first off, the obvious things, like, if they, if I just aced on the on a step out right hand serve um, and someone's cheating over that way a little bit, then I'll probably flango them because I have more angle to work with. Um, but if they're standing straight up, um, just waiting for anything. I I don't know. I just like to look at them and like just feel what vibe I get from them. Kind of. It sounds dumb. It really does. But the only time I actually like decide like right as I'm serving is between a drop serve and a serve. So I'll try to like for a fango or a step out. Um, I'll like step out and then if I can read them running far as I'm throwing the ball, then I'll chop it and do a drop serve. But in terms of the actual serve, I usually have a little bit of a plan. Um, once I've looked at the person for each person, sounds weird, but that's honestly the way I do it. Mind control aces out of PJ. <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. Yeah. Building off of I, that, I, sorry, no real force. quick, Logan. Yeah. I'm curious what you guys think because you two are obviously some of the better servers in the game, if not the best. Do you feel that in the years to come, serving needs to change, whether it's moving the serving line back or modifying the rules in some fashion? Or are you very happy with it where they are because you dominate at it? Um, definitely tough to say. I, I would I would more lean towards uh, serving is fine how it is because um, then again I haven't faced PJ in a real tournament, but I know that warming up and just like practice serves, we both do quite a good job at at, at returning each other's serves. So my kind of thought process is. If we can return each other's serves, then other people should be able to return our serves as well, you know. And uh, I mean, Dan is a fantastic server, and he, and he was acing people all day. I think he aced us uh, four times total in the, so many times. Yeah, four times total in, <laughs> in, in in three games. So I mean, um, I don't know. I feel like it's just work on the serve return uh, because aces will happen, but just cause that's just part of the game. I feel like aces should should happen. But uh, just try to limit them as much as you can by working on serve return, you know? That's kind of my thought process. I I would generally agree with that. I think um, with each facet of, of spike ball or with every sport, there, according to the rules, there's always going to be someone who's the best at it because they're the best of taking advantage of each like facet of the game. And so let's say you change the serving rules and now it's like only allow gentlemen to serve or you're serving from 12 feet instead of six. Um, then it'll change the game, and I'm not convinced it'll make like rallies happen more. I'm convinced it'll just make maybe different people be better at it who have a different skill set. Um, and so then it would come down to getting easy serves and knowing how to finish them. So I guess the best finishers would be some of the best people. Um, and so I'm not necessarily an advocate for changing it, but I think part of that might be because it helped, like I like it because <laughs> it helps me. But also, kind of like what Tyler said, and what like Skylar Bowles has said, and a lot of the West Coast people, I feel like I've said, is kind of like um, the serves are there, like they're returnable. People show you they're returnable from us and from like Drucker and from Dan. They're returnable. You just have to work and figure out how to return them because people are doing it. It's just not a lot of people. Players need to get better. Right. <laughs> I was playing the other day against Dan. Like, I haven't really played against him much recently. So in the first time game we played it, I think he aced Nick and I like eight or nine times. 
<laughs> in, a game, in a game, in a game. Uh, and then I think he aced us like a good amount, like not a, a great amount later, but we just got bad touches. But it was actually more fun because like every point was a rally because we got a bad touch. So like, I it it are it, it, it kind of made rallies happen because yeah. there are bad touches. Like often. right, as long as they're not uh, complete aces, which I think, like you said, people will get better at server turns and can get it. You know, some aces are almost impossible and you can't, and you just, like, commend people for that. But most yeah. are uh, returnable. I mean, if you are really good. Um, and it might be just, like, a barrier of entry. You know, we might just see maybe an even bigger separation between the top five teams and everyone else, or the top ten teams and everyone else. But, like, within that top group, I think we'll actually find more rallies uh, in the long term if people get better. Well, because in my mind, like, this is a slightly different example, but even um, it's been this way ever since I started playing spike ball in my mind where, like, Chico, uh, Sean, and Skyler would, they were, the serves weren't really a huge deal when I first started playing, but defensive touches were huge, and they were just obviously the best in the country at everything defense, and then were also the best finishers in the country, and so that combo was killing people, and it was like, you could make a rule to make e defense easier, or you could just appreciate how good they are at defense and everybody try to be like them. And I feel like that's kind of where we're reaching with some serves, where it's like people get aced by Drucker and they think, man, that should be illegal. But also, I feel like what I would rather people think is just like, man, I need to cut in faster and get to that ball because that's a gettable ball, because people do get it. Yeah. Cool. That's a good point. Cool. I'm going to transition to a slightly different question. Um, last season, y'all both played with two different partners on competitive teams. Um, and y'all have history playing together in the past, as uh, Sean has experienced. Um, <laughs> but what <laughs> what, what made Chizik Showalter happen this year? Why come together this year? Um, what was kind of like the formation behind that? <laughs> you go first. All right. Um, for me, I don't. I love playing with different people all the time, and so, um, and I also love winning. And I think that combo kind of came together when uh, I played with Josiah Zimmerman last year. He wasn't super sure if it was a super a really good year. We had some good wins, some pretty sucky losses, but really fun playing with him. Um, and then after nationals, he wasn't super sure what his plans were for this year. wasn't sure how involved he would be. Um, and so I having played with Tyler a few other times before that and had a ton of fun being really good friends and then also having a lot of success. He was kind of my first option and um, I asked him what he thought of it and he can tell you what he thought of it, but that was kind of my, that was kind of my side of it where it was like, I knew with Tyler, all I had done was so far, it was like three tournaments, I think, or maybe four that we had played before this year, um, just as mashup teammates and had never really done anything unsuccessful together and also He's one of my best friends, and it seemed like just a super fun combo. Um, and so that's what kind of led led to this year. And so Josiah Zerman ended up playing with his little brother and not playing. They played like three or four tournaments. Um, and so he kind of played how much he wanted to. I played every single tournament I could, so I got to play how much I wanted to, and it, it worked out really well. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so mine, I th mine was definitely a little more difficult than that. Um, so uh, yeah, so I, I play as the rookies, and uh, we did really well for three years or so. And uh, basically my goal was I want to win nationals. I feel like I can win nationals. And um, yeah, I, I just, I don't know. I thought PJ was a great option because we're really good friends, like you said. And, and we already beat the number one team at the time. So, I mean, we had a pretty good track record. But... Uh, but but for me, the overlying reason was uh, um, basically throughout the season, me and Fitzy had some bad games or bad series, I could say, and uh, it kind of led to me kind of getting upset at him after a tournament. So for me to be mad at my best friend was like like after Spike Ball was just a really tough feeling for me and a feeling that I really didn't like. So. Didn't want to have that really affect us anymore, so I kind of tried, uh, did my best or did what I thought would be best, and kind of said I think we should play on separate teams next year because I don't know it was just a feeling that I didn't like very much, and 
yeah, wanted to change it up. So uh, um, him and Anthony played together, and they had a fantastic year. I mean, they beat us, and yeah, yeah I'm I'm happy with how things worked out, and uh, I think he is as well. So yeah, that's kind of how it went down. Cool. The start of something great. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm curious. So uh, next year, obviously as national champions, there's you can't really go any higher than that. You guys, you guys have done it. Next year, what is the goals going into it? What's the mentality? Do you win every tournament you play in? Be national champions again? I mean, so uh, I personally do not like losing whatsoever. So uh, I think my goal, at least, is to definitely win every tournament I play in. I mean, kind of my mentality when I play with anyone is I I feel like I have a chance to win this tournament. So. Yeah, I mean, my goal would definitely be win every tournament and then go on to win nationals. Um, yeah, uh, that's that's really all I can say. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would say I'd say a similar thing. I think part of what me and Tyler first bonded over was hatred of losing, and that's uh, proven to be true every time we've played together, even when we did lose. Um, and so I think, I mean, next year, we've, we've done it. Like, we achieved my dream goal as black ball, which was to win the national championship. And honestly, it's crazy and still kind of surreal. But um, to do it twice would just be that much cooler. Um, and to do it however many times we can um, would be just insane. So I think that's kind of the goal for next year, taking it a year at a time, just being like, all right, let's see if we can take a really good season that we had this year um, and have even more fun more best friend hangouts and more wins than we did last year and just see what happens after that. That's kind of the goal. I have a, I have a follow-up question on that. So I have, this, I have this bold prediction in the NBA that Kevin Durant will end his career with more rings than LeBron James. That's dumb. At the end of, <laughs> at the end of your career, when we look back, who will be more successful? Chizik Showalter or Chico? <laughs> <laughs> this is a battle of the eras. <laughs> mm. Um... I mean, I guess it depends on if Chico continues playing or starts up playing or not again. <laughs> because I, think, I don't know. If, I don't know if we need to start playing again. It's like if you compare two different eras of teams in the same sport, you'll never yeah. know. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. I was gonna say, I feel like regardless of what we do, Chico is like. It's kind of like right now, regardless of what anybody does in the NBA. To take your example. Michael Jordan's the GOAT just because he did everything the best first and how are you going to do everything the best after he already did it the best and so I feel like in my mind it's just Chico like the bar is Chico and if Spike Ball lives for a long time like 100 years from now it's still going to be like remember Chico and maybe maybe hopefully they'll be like also remember the <laughs> Chizik Showalter era right after <laughs> Chico um, but I don't think there's any there's no like passing up the Chico era in my mind I don't feel like that's a thing yeah, I mean, yeah, they were, yeah, like basically PJ said, they're they're the ones everyone looks up to. I mean, still, if people people join today, they'll go back and look at videos and be like, oh man, Chico Spikes was the <laughs> was a team to beat. They beat everyone and they won nationals twice, made it to the championship three times. So I mean, we got a lot of work to do before we can reach that kind of level. Um, don't think it's impossible, but I mean, still, I feel like it's gonna be like I don't know, Chico's. Chico's won. Chico will, I don't know, hey, you guys, always be remembered as that, you know? You guys just got to worry about your totally loss. turned on you, Logan. Yeah. <laughs> you got to worry about your losses, though, because Chico, I think, only lost three times in, in all the years playing together. So uh, worry about the losses. Maybe the championships, uh, you know, maybe likely to come, but watch out for those losses. You know what? I'm okay with just kind of being in the same boat as Chico. I remember my yeah, first tournament. Yeah that I saw Chico was the Nashville Grand Slam of like 2015, I think. And I remember being so freaking giddy that Sean Boyer was standing right in front of me. And so now to just be like on a conference call with him and just be buds is just crazy. So like, I don't know. I, I don't even really like the idea of like passing up other like Chico. I like the idea of just like, they were a dynasty. I want to be a dynasty like Chico and then just see what happens from there. I'm just getting all warm and fuzzy. This call is turning. <laughs> John's love it. Well, we usually make fun of Chico over there. Uh, we're working. All right, but we had a question about that. Like, when you guys uh, were starting off, like, were there players you looked up to besides maybe Chico? Um, <laughs> players you looked up to, players that you kind of tried to model your game after? 
Um, I mean, for me, I, I think that I kind of started off pretty early. I feel like Summer Spike 2013 was a really early start off. So I think that I was along with, well, not, not even, I'm, I put myself in the same boat as Chico, Beavers, and Nashburg, but I feel like they kind of started off getting everyone like really hyped in it. And then it was kind of the rookies that were next. So we were pretty early on. Uh, definitely. I mean, obviously you got to play your game like Chico when you're starting off. It's just, like, they were the best, so we just tried to be like, hey, we're going to get some sick defensive touches and then and then put away as many balls as we can. So, yeah, I was I was pretty early on, but, I mean, yeah, got to be Chico and then, like, a buddy just getting some crazy hands and, yeah, kind of that kind of play style because we were known for defense. So, yeah, just trying to model it against the huge defensive players of the game. I think for me... Um, there were several players that were just kind of influential on how I played, or at least ones that I like really looked up to. Um, there was Joel Graham, who honestly didn't like, I don't think I matched much of his game, but he's easily um, like the most classy character filled like sportsman I've ever played spike ball against. And so I like looked up to him a ton just from the get go. Um, but then his partner, Scott Wilson, had, but when I started, had the sickest pull on his hits in the game of spike ball like <laughs> still some of the craziest pulls i've ever seen um so i tried to emulate him in that dylan fogarty um wrecked me in one of my first tournaments him and drucker played me and my brother seth and just he i thought i hit hard and then i played dylan fogarty and i realized what hitting hard looked like and then also skyler just like sneaky shots little little uh, deceptive hits deceptive defensive plays stuff like that I got one uh, final question if we're wrapping up here. What is the coolest thing you're going to spend your prize money on? <laughs> oh, PJ. <laughs> <laughs> Go um, for it, Tyler. <laughs> <laughs> um, coolest thing? Um, probably, <laughs> if I know me, probably uh, travel to California or something. I don't know. Probably just something that where I'm traveling and having a good time with friends. So, yeah, that's a pretty cool aspect of my life. But, uh, PJ, what's your answer? <laughs> my answer. Hmm. Um, so I'm in a ton of college debt. So some of it will go to that. Um, hopefully for some travel. Hopefully with Tyler, maybe. <laughs> and then um, if you're curious past that, feel free to text me and I'll tell you in person. <laughs> <laughs> right on right on alright well uh, thank you guys for uh, joining us today yeah. thanks for having us thanks for having some, us yeah, great insight into the Chiswick Showalter uh, year and it sounds like we should be looking forward to another year of it Let's hope so as far as I know <laughs> <laughs> good sweet okay uh, and with that I guess we'll sign off everyone thank you for listening um, and we'll see you next time. See y'all later. See you guys. Adios.